Hello friends, hope you are doing well. Welcome to our channel Metallurgy Crisp. In this video, we are going to discuss the sensitization of stainless steels and all the things that are related to the sensitization of stainless steels and how we tackle the problem. Friends, let's look at the contents of our video. First, we we'll look at the sensitization of stainless steels. Friends, whatever is written on this board are all are one way or the other related to each other. We are going to look at what is intergranular corrosion, what is stabilization of stainless steels, and what is weld decay, what is knife line attack, and what is stress corrosion cracking, and how these are all connected to each other. So, friends, let's begin our video. Friends, let's look at sensitization of stainless steels. Friends, this mainly occurs in 18 by 8 stainless steel. Here, 18% is chromium, 8% is a nickel. What happens during slow cooling of these stainless steels? Chromium carbide precipitates on the grain boundary. Friends, we know the main purpose of chromium is to form an impervious layer. So that it can protect the steel from the corrosion. Our protective layer is thin, impervious, passive and transparent layer. But because of this precipitation on the grain boundary, the chromium depletes from the area just adjacent to the grain boundary. So now we have all this area is chromium rich. Except for this grain boundary area from which chromium is depleted and precipitated on the grain boundary. Friends, this precipitation of chromium carbide on the grain boundary is called sensitization of stainless steel. Friends, now let's see what problems does this precipitation of chromium carbide at the grain boundary creates. One main problem is because this chromium carbide makes the grain boundaries brittle, it decreases the room temperature ductility of the structure. Friends, now let's look at another major problem. Now we know that chromium depleted from the surrounding areas and got deposited at the grain boundary. We know the rest of the structure apart from grain boundaries is chromium rich. So here our chromium oxide layer is there and protecting the structure. But except at the grain boundary since there is no chromium because it got depleted, these areas are now not protected. Now the areas where there is no chromium are exposed to the corrosive atmosphere. Here except the grain boundaries, whole structure, the surface of the whole metal access cathode and only the small areas just adjacent to the grain boundary acts as anode. So here, a corrosion occurs on grain boundary, which in turn decreases the strength of the grain boundary. So this leads to the disintegration of the material along the grain boundaries. Friends, this is called intergranular corrosion because it is happening between the grains at the grain boundary. So this is intergranular corrosion. This is just like pitting corrosion, highly localized corrosion. It occurs only along the grain boundary regions from which chromium got depleted. Friends, here I am giving you a little assignment. This is one of the bar category question. Draw the chromium profile across the grain boundary in a sensitized stainless steel. So I want to know what is the concentration profile from here to here. So please draw percentage of chromium versus distance for this distance and post it in our group, our telegram group and I am going to say whether it is correct or not. Friends, please interact with me. I am trying to help. Friends, so how can we stop this sensitization? So friends, look, chromium carbide precipitates at a temperature around 500 and it dissolves at a temperature above 800 degrees centigrade. So chromium carbide forms in between the temperature range of 800 to 500. So we are cooling and we came until 800 degrees centigrade. If we cool in this region quickly, fast enough, there is no chromium carbide is being formed so that we can avoid this sensitization. So our main aim is quickly cooling in this region. We can come slowly until this temperature and we have to cool it very quickly until this temperature. So we avoided completely the formation of chromium carbide. So this is one way of stopping sensitization. But here we have another problem. Let's discuss that. Friends, so now we have cooled our stainless steel quickly. So now there is no chromium carbide precipitation at our grain boundaries. Now we are welding two stainless steel pieces, 18 by stainless steel pieces. So this is the fusion zone. So here there is no problem at all because it cools quickly. But the heat affected zone, which is away from the fusion zone, also gets heated if the temperature in this region reaches to a temperature of 500 degrees centigrade done here we have, there is a formation of chromium carbide so even though we succeeded by cooling it quickly to the room temperature to avoid chrom chromium carbide precipitation during welding in the heat affected zone region there is the precipitation of chromium carbide so the problems are the same as usual same there is localized corrosion attack and there is reduction strength of the weld because of weak heat affected zones so friends, if our sensitization occurs during welding in the heat affected zone, we call it weld decay because it is occurring during welding. Weld decay has also been a very major defect, which is completely undesirable. So friends, now let's look at how can we stop this 
the methods to stop this well decay or the sensitization of stainless steel are called stabilization of stainless steels. Friends, the first method we have already seen faster cooling in the region where chromium carbide is forming. It, it has its own drawback that if we weld those steels, this well decay is again occurring. So now let's look at another method. Friends, here we do not want chromium carbide to form. So if we add some alloying elements whose carbide more, is more stable than that of chromium carbide, there is no more carbon is left for chromium to form chromium carbide. So friends, on addition of titanium and niobium, these carbides, the carbides formed by these elements are more stable than that of the chromium carbide. So this will solve our problem of weld decay and sensitization. Friends, now let's see how does this actually work. Friends, the temperature ranges here given are the here 500 to 800 chromium carbide is present and more than 800 degrees centigrade chromium carbide dissolves. But the formation of titanium and niobium carbides for, starts at 800 degrees centigrade and they stay in this region and more than 1200 degrees centigrade all the carbides dissolve. So while cooling, we cool slowly in this region. So what happens? Carbon is being consumed by titanium and niobium. So when we come to this region, there is no more carbon left for chromium to form its carbide. So by this way, by slowly cooling in the region of 1200 to 800 degrees centigrade, we are completely avoiding the formation of chromium carbide. Friends, here the problem is always being the carbon. So that is why we do not want any carbide or stainless steel. We, we use vacuum argon decarbonization, deoxidation processes. We do this vacuum treatment to remove complete carbon. If we can produce carbon of less than 0.02% as carbon, then we can avoid this sensitization problem. So friends, here this temperature ranges are very important. This is slow cooling until 800 degrees centigrade. Carbon is completely gone. So we are avoiding the formation of chromium carbide. Friends, the third method is carbon weight percentage. We take care such that the carbon weight percentage is less than 0.02 percentage. Friends, is there a possibility of getting chromium carbide even after stabilizing the steel? Yes, there is a possibility and we call this knife line attack. Sensitization of stabilized stainless steel. If it occurs in stabilized stainless steel, we call this knife line attack. So friends, this is our stabilized stainless steel. In this, we are having carbides of titanium and niobium. So now we are welding our steel. In heat affected zone, temperature is reaching 500, 600 degrees centigrade. But is there a possibility of formation of chromium carbide? No. Why? Because titanium and niobium are already taken all the carbon which is available. So even so, in the heat affected zone, there is no possibility of formation of this chromium carbide. But friends, here the problem is not heat affected zone, but the fusion zone itself. So what happens? Fusion zone, we have taken it to a temperature so high that it is now liquid and it solidifies very quickly so that there is no time for the formation of any of the carbides. Titanium, niobium, chromium, no carbides in the fusion zone. Due to this rapid solidification of the weld, we have the stresses generated because of the faster cooling. So to relieve these stresses, we do stress relieving handling. So friends, here we go to a temperature greater than that of 500 or 600 degrees centigrade. Friends, we know that there is carbon, titanium, niobium, chromium, everything in the fusion zone. So at this temperature, which is stable, we have discussed, chromium carbide is stable. So chromium carbide formation takes place. Friends, there is a small, thin, knife-like structure forms, which is chromium carbide precipitation. This is also makes the structure brittle. So there is a chances of failure. Friends, now let's look at stress corrosion cracking. Stress corrosion cracking means that there is corrosion occurring. And at the same time, there is presence of stress. At this, in these conditions, material fails like anything. So friends, earlier we have discussed the whole surface of the metal it acts as cathode, but the grain boundary area acts as anode. So this is highly localized corrosion. If at all a small pit forms in the grain boundary region, so there is a high stress concentration at this point. If there is a tensile load there, then material breaks. So friends, when the corrosion is occurring and there is a stress and the failure occurs because of the combination of stress and corrosion, we call this stress corrosion cracking. So friends, let's have a recap. What is sensitization of stainless steel? This is formation of chromium carbide at the grain boundaries. Next, what is intergranular cracking? Because of this sensitization, the grain boundary region becomes brittle. So the crack propagates in between the grains. So if we call that, we call that intergranular cracking. Then what is stabilization of stainless steel? Friends, we have discussed all the ways by which we can avoid this formation of chromium carbide. So all the methods of stabilization of stainless steel we have discussed. Then what is weld decay? If this sensitization occurs during welding of a stainless steel, we call it weld decay. And what is knife line attack? Knife line attack, if our sensitization occurs 
in stabilized steel we call it knife line attack and stress corrosion cracking if the failure occurs because of the combination of stress and corrosion we call it stress corrosion cracking so that's it in this video friends i hope you enjoyed the video don't forget this simple assignment share and post it in our telegram group happy learning have a nice day and thank you so much for watching